What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Almighty Max. And today, we're back to the NBA Iceberg Explained. There's a bunch of NBA theories, you know what I mean? All in one. He's explaining them. If you're new, drop a like, subscribe. Let's get to 1K. Feel me? We're almost there, man. I'm going to try to daily upload. Don't, don't, don't take my word on that, but I'm going to try it. You feel me? It's the plan, so this is day one. I don't really know too many NBA theories, so when I lose, uh, conspiracy theories. The I mean, the motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player. Uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. The NBA has existed for what seems like forever now. Thousands and thousands of the greatest athletes in the world have come in and played out their careers. Millions of people look forward to watching new games. Every I remember that shot. The playoffs Go. is a spectacle like Got that Nike Curry shit out the, the playoffs. Finals, even more. With all of this positive attention does come a bit of controversy. And over the years, the NBA has been criticized by its fans for its interesting decisions at times. We'll be looking over the end. Now, this commercial is be looking ugly as hell. Some of the best stories I could find on the internet put into one. The most well known ones at the top to the lesser known, slash, barely even talked about ones at, at the, the bottom. bottom. Without further ado, put on your tinfoil cap, folks. It's time to dive into the NBA iceberg. I'm a big fan of conspiracy theories. Most of us would be familiar. First, we have the Kardashian curse. This relates that's, to NBA players. Dating that's basic. That's entry level Kardashian conspiracy theories. Jenner family, and then for whatever reason, not playing as good once that happens. Players like Tristan Thompson, Ben Simmons, Kyle Kuzma, Devin Booker. Oh my God! Have all been told they've received the Kardashian curse, and whether or not you think it's a real curse, it's a funny thing to think about. The next conspiracy is Michael Jordan's gambling suspension. Many believe Jordan retiring the first time in 1993 was actually a punishment and suspension by NBA commissioner David Stern. As the retirement didn't make much sense at the time, Jordan had just repeated. The punishment would be because of the constant negative attention that came with Jordan's gambling problems. How he had to testify in court because a drug dealer had a check he wrote. How someone won over $900,000 from MJ in golf betting. It was a whole mess. The folded envelope might just be the most well-known conspiracy on this list, taking place during the 1985 draft lottery. Many say it was rigged to give the New York Knicks a superstar center in Patrick Ewing. If New York had him, the NBA would be printing money. The draft lottery was conducted using envelopes for each team that were then placed into a large plastic ball. I knew this already though. Before David Stern pulled out the winner. The envelope contained These are really like not only bent, lightweight but theories, feel me? What are, what are ones we don't know about? Stern could easily identify which card was New York and hand them the number 1 pick. David Stern denies the claims that it was ever rigged, but it's hard to deny what's shown on video. And that video is suspicious. That shit was rigged for sure. Come on. Like, come on. We're not stupid. Final theory at the tippy top, which has definitely become more popular over the years, is tampering. Tampering is when teams or players from other teams try to get players who are under contract to join them. Many accuse LeBron of this in the Anthony Davis saga. How Davis only wanted to go to the Lakers or Draymond Green and how he could have been talking to Kevin Durant for months before he signed with the Warriors. Tampering probably goes on in the NBA a lot more than you think. It's just not being caught. Oh, that's pretty Those obvious, though. The top of the top, well-known conspiracies. Now, let's go a bit lower. Kicking things off, the 2006 Finals is one that many believe was rigged in favor of the Miami Heat. The strongest evidence might be from Tim Donaghy, the expelled ref who spent time in prison for gambling on games. He came out and said that the NBA league office wanted to make the series go longer. They did this by mandating the refs to be more efficient in calling fouls against Dallas and for Dwayne Wade. 
The Mavericks jumped to a 2-0 series lead, but proceeded to lose the next four. Many believe the difference in foul calls for both sides was the reason the Mavs lost. Others say Dwayne Wade simply destroyed the Mavericks' defense. Next, I don't think that one was rigged. Let me know in the comments below if you think that was, that, was, that shit was rigged. I don't think that one was rigged. Next up is the 2011 draft lottery, where the Cleveland Cavaliers ended up getting the number one and four picks. The number one pick was received in a trade from the Clippers earlier that season, one that had a 2.8% chance of even going number one in the first place. Many believe the league felt sorry for the Cavs because LeBron James had departed the I don't think so season. either. So, in an attempt to help the franchise, the Cavs were given two top five picks. The Miami Heat and their fantastic big three that won two championships is a story like no other. Yet, many think that this idea was planned years ahead during the 2008 Olympics or earlier. This goes back to my tampering point. It very well could be happening. It's just not being caught. Chris Bosh said he had their phone numbers years before the Olympics and that James, Wade, and Bosh all signed three-year rookie scale extensions instead of the five-year max, opening up the idea of them all being 2010 free agents. It very well could have been planned, and it probably was, and the plan obviously worked out well, Yet. That one, that they confirmed that though, because I remember Carmelo Anthony said that LeBron James and Dwayne Wade actually came to him first and said, "Yo, we want you to, to play with us, sign a lower con, like a smaller contract, so by the time we go be free agents at the same time, we could play for the Heat or the Bulls." I think it was they was trying to play for. And Melo said, "Now nah, I'm trying to get this bread, so I'm gonna go for the longer contracts." So that's why he end, he ended up going to the uh with with James and uh and Wade because he ended up signing a longer contract with Denver. Instead of signing up three years. Uh, that's confirmed. The big three, like, Melo confirmed it. conspiracy is the infamous CP3 trade to the Lakers that was vetoed. Everyone remembers this. The Lakers and Hornets had a deal set up for a blockbuster trade involving superstar point guard Chris Paul. This would be the help Kobe needs to bring another championship to L.A. Unfortunately, the Hornets at the time were owned by the league themselves, and David Stern wasn't a fan of this trade and vetoed it. His explanation was quote-unquote basketball reasons. This move is still heavily criticized as both teams had agreed to it, but David Stern didn't. Those are all of the conspiracies above water. Now, yeah, I think Chris Paul would have helped the Lakers win a championship that year. I, I think he would have. Him being the best point guard in the league at the time and Kobe Bryant being Kobe Bryant, they would have won a championship for sure. Kind of sucks that ain't happened though. Isn't talked about as much that the casual fan wouldn't know. Now we go below water. Let's start off with the Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, and Tim Duncan big three that never was. Oh shit. T Mac and Grant Hill, both star players who were hungry for a championship. They just needed a superstar power forward in Tim Duncan to complete the mighty big three. And according to many, including Tim Duncan himself, the deal to Orlando was already set in stone. Duncan said verbally that he wanted to sign with the Magic, but for whatever reason, last second, he changed his mind. Yeah, that nigga Popovich fucking threatened that boy. Because of Doc Rivers. At one of the free agent meetings, Duncan Circle asked whether spouses were allowed on the team's plane. Head coach of the Magic, Doc Rivers, said no. And because of this, Duncan went back to San Antonio. This is a theory that during the 2014 NBA Finals, the Spurs intentionally turned off the air conditioning in the arena in Game 1. The motive was to throw off... Oh, yeah, when LeBron got, got cramps. LeBron. LBJ drove to the rim and finished this tough layup. Yet, since the arena was so hot... As well as low stamina, LeBron broke out in cramps and was unable to play the rest of the game. This completely destroyed any momentum the Heat had. No, Kyle Monaghan, niggas, niggas made fun of LeBron for catching them cramps. Bro, y'all niggas, come on, come on, bro. I catch cramps playing 2K, Monaghan, 2K. And I'll be there tweaking. So imagine the middle of a fucking basketball game catching cramps in a hot-ass AC and then intense-ass game. You've been playing, you're the best player on the team. You've been playing for that long. Like, come on. 
That shit gotta hurt, bro. That shit hurt me while I'm fucking sleeping or fucking playing 2K. My nigga gotta hurt in the middle of a basketball game. I don't wanna hear it. An NBA basketball game at that. Blown out by San Antonio in the final few minutes, as well as the whole series. Is it possible the Spurs intentionally made the arena more hot to cause this, thus giving them the momentum needed to win it all? Who knows? Following that, the next one is revolving around Marcus and Markeith Morris, two NBA players that are twins who look exactly alike with the exact same tattoos. Because of this, many believe they've switched places a few times in the past, whether it's during school for tests or NBA games. This is most supported when in the 2017 playoffs, Markeith Morris had an ankle injury in game one but surprisingly came back in game two looking healthier than normal. Could this be an amazing recovery or did Marcus Morris take matters into his own hands? Those conspiracies were nice and all. That'd be that's always wanted a twin. Sink a bit lower into the depths of the water. Tanking is a complicated subject and a huge problem that the NBA is desperately trying to fix. It's a popular opinion that the NBA has been exposed with this concept. You can simply intentionally tank for a bit, lose games on purpose, and then you'll be a contender in a matter of... What team I think Ben Simmons is going to be on? Sixers are the best example of this. They've intentionally... I've seen people saying Ben Simmons might get traded uh, for Kyrie Irving. I'm saying since Kyrie don't want to get the vaccine, then that's my trade that boy for Ben Simmons. I don't know, though. Who knows? There's a guy in my school, like in my class. According to him, that nigga says he works for the Knicks, right? And according to him... He's saying that like uh like insider like managers and shit have heard things from the Nets saying that they're just trying to trade Kyrie. They don't know for who, but they're trying to trade him. I don't know. That nigga might be capping, but he he works in Madison Square Garden for the Knicks. Like he's a tall boy, some shit like that. So he might be telling the truth. Who knows? Built horrible rosters, stockpiled assets, and now I don't think I'm gonna react to the whole video. I probably save the second part for like a separate video tomorrow. This is already at 12 minutes. I don't think I think gonna watch more than 12 minutes. Stealth tanking is when a team pretends to be contending but is actively tanking at the same time. Many have accused teams like, like Sacramento, Sacramento not Chicago Bulls. Trust me, Sacramento and Chicago, they wasn't tanking, they just sucked. Like the niggas was ass. Especially Sacramento. Chicago might be all right now, but and Minnesota Timberwolves. Not they all just ass. They're all just doo doo. Contend and make it to the playoffs, but always ending up with a high pick. Why oh my do the God. Sixers get constantly criticized for their tanking, but teams like the T-Wolves are never mentioned? The next time you're watching your favorite squad, ask yourself, is my team stealthy? Oh my God. The next theory has to do with Markel Fultz. Not just one thing, but everything. There's just so many questions about this kid, from how he got injured, to if he even got injured in the first place. Nah, no, he for sure got injured. Arriving in the NBA and first games he had absolutely no jump shot four years later he still can't shoot if this is an injury then how hasn't it healed yet if this is all mental then how has he not remembered to shoot properly yet was it a motorcycle accident that nobody knows about that caused oh. this will we ever even know the answer to these questions it's just so mysterious whenever i hear now he, he was gassed up too i always look to find the highlights and in them, there's no three-pointers. Zilch. It's as if we've just accepted the fact that someone who shot 40% from three in college is now going to be a below-average shooter for the rest of his career. He's nice, though, still. And it makes no sense. The last theory before we go deeper is Thon Maker and his true age. This was a huge controversy during the 2016 draft. Oh, drop that, nigga. With the 10th pick. At the time, the consensus was that he was 19, but Reddit users dove deep into the situation, believing that he graduated high school in 2010 in Australia, stating that he could be as old as 23. Such strong evidence shocked the NBA world, and it became a running joke that we had no idea how old Maker was. Yet, as his career faded into mediocrity, people started caring less and less. And Google says he's 24, so who really knows? Going down further into uh, the I'm team. stopping the video right here. If y'all want to react, if y'all want me to react to the rest of it, leave a comment down below. Uh, I probably will though tomorrow. If you're new, drop a like, subscribe. to 1K subscribers. 
But let's get there. So, boy, my max and all. I'm out. And do y'all think Dawn Maker is actually, like, hiding his age? I feel like he might have to, to try to get in the league. But keep it who gives a fuck? That nigga's ass. Like, is he even still in the NBA? You know what I'm saying? So, boy, my max and all. I'm out.